Hello everyone, I got three storytelling secrets that you can steal from Casey Neistat right now to up your vlogging game. I hope he doesn't mind, let's get right to it. So Casey often talks about storytelling that it's the most important thing, is of course the story, but he doesn't actually say how to go about doing it. Maybe it's a case of the magician not giving away his secrets, or maybe he just doesn't want you to think that this way is the only way. Since Casey won't say, I decided to put this on myself to study all his vlogs, shot by shot, story by story. Not literally, but obsessively close. Number one, visual storytelling. No more just shooting random things and talking to the camera about whatever you're doing right now. Slow down and think about what is it that's happening and how does that make you feel? Take an example from the most mundane thing. What's happening? Let's say you have the Saturday morning off and you're gonna have a lunch with the family. Now, how does that make you feel? Well, it's nice to take a breather. Your wife has a habit of taking forever to get ready. You're just waiting most of the time and you don't know what to do. You don't want to start and work. Stop. You see what I was doing just there? I was talking to you and complaining verbally. Now, this is fine, but there are other ways of going about this. Instead of just complaining to you about it, this is what Casey did. You film yourself getting up, bored. You clean up, bored. You play with the kid, still kind of bored. And then finally he reveals to us all this time, all this boredom was actually waiting for Candace to get ready. Do you want to go breakfast, Fifi? Are you ready? Okay. I'm ready. Essentially be intentional about what you share before you even shoot and be creative with how you share your insights with the audience. It's also a pretty hilarious way to complain. I wonder what Candace thought the next day when she watched the vlog. Number two, end your stories. Remember this, a story that does not have an ending is just rambling. We all have met people who start telling us a story and we have no idea where it's going. And it just keeps going and going and going because they never actually resolve whatever story they're telling us. In Casey's words, And every good story follows this rule. That is the rule of a three act narrative. You've got a beginning, you've got a middle, you've got an end. Setup, conflict, resolution. It's only three parts. So let's take a look at an example from Casey. Somebody asked in the comments what this um, black bag is that's always on my hip. This thing is just a little like camera pouch. It's where I keep my point and shoot. Most of us, might actually just end the story there. But that's not what he does. And this is just too bulky to like fit in a pocket, you know? It's like, that's a lot to deal with. Owen says I look like a grandpa for keeping it on my waist. Yesterday, this company called Moment sent me this cute little thing. But I honestly don't know if I can actually deal with carrying anything else on my waist. I'm starting to feel like Batman with all these like attachments on my belt. So just make sure you tie up your stories and share what the results of everything that's happened. Even if you just have a really funny clip that doesn't have an ending, just don't have too many of those because even the most fun ramblings are just ramblings. Number three, mix it up. Just think of all the ways that you can alter the viewing experience for your audience. Maybe it's music and changing the mood. Maybe it's going location to location or changing a bunch of camera angles, you know? This just helps the viewing experience that much more engaging. Things are changing, things are happening, so then they'll be less likely to be bored. All movies and TV shows does this, and the cuts are getting faster and faster and faster because we're impatient. I mean, just take a look at how many shots he has in this sequence. And alternate between talking and some other clips, like, like B-roll of you traveling from one place to another and time it to music. Seeing the music and the visual dance together is actually really fun. I mean, why else do we watch a sequence like this from Casey? I hate saying goodbye.
change it up, make it interesting. Unless, of course, you're gorgeous and people just stare at you for hours while you do nothing. Um, but anyone can use this to make their videos more interesting. Anyway, here's one final bonus tip. Oh wait, which of the three tips did you find most helpful? Comment below and let me know. And let me know if there are any tips that you want me to expand on and I could do more videos about that. Bonus tip. It's not about documenting your day. Even if you're doing daily vlogging, it's not about documenting your day. It's about sharing your unique human experience. He actually often says this. And my goal with this vlog isn't, and it has never been, to like share all the intimacies of my life. It's always just been to create a good or entertaining piece of content every day. If you check out episode 53 where I talked about him getting up and waiting for Candace, that small story of complaining about waiting for Candace is actually a smaller part of a bigger story. If you watch the whole thing, you'll notice that the small story of Candace being a handful at home as well as the restaurant that they go to next is all about despite Candace being a handful, there's nowhere he'd rather be. I don't know if I've mentioned where I am yet. It's Saturday night, 11 p.m. I'm in Las Vegas, and I'm going to bed. And despite traveling to Vegas for the weekend, he is not excited. He would much rather be at home, which is the bigger story of the episode. So, there's so much to learn here. So again, in other words, share your unique insights creatively. This is actually what I'm most fascinated about, this whole vlogging thing. Everyone has a story, so let's get better at sharing it because I think the world will be better for it.